Welcome back. So you graduated from Yale Drama School. I did. And after you graduated, you wrote a letter to Trevor Nunn. Yes. What did the letter say? And I thought, well, I've just left Yale Drama School. I ought to be able to go to the Royal Shakespeare Company now. I'm going to pursue every possible avenue of employment. And uh, so I wrote a letter to Trevor Nunn, care of Royal Shakespeare Company, Stratford-upon-Avon, <laughs> and I sent away a letter saying, essentially, tell me what plane to be on. You know, I've got my MFA from Yale and uh, my equity card, and I want to come to England and do Shakespeare with the best. And I got a letter back, uh, which basically said, fat chance, sucker. I don't <laughs> hire Americans. I can't even hire the British actors I want to hire. <laughs> I, I was trying, trying, trying to get these acting gigs, and here's, the, here's these British actors coming over and stealing all the attention. And, and here's now full page ads for The Life and Adventures of Nicholas Nickleby. And I thought, I'm going to start a committee for actors' equity to keep British actors off of Broadway. That Trevor Nunn guy who said to me, I can't hire American actors. Now he's coming over and he's like taking our jobs away from us here. <laughs> and what was the name of this committee? Uh, it was Boob, <laughs> British out of Broadway. <laughs> Or boob. The T-shirt said boob at, right across here. Can Strategically you placed. Yes, uh, my dear friend from Yale, uh, one of the people who has since sadly uh, passed away, but a great, great actress whom I really, really respected, said to me, "Rick, you have to go to see this Nicholas Nickleby thing. It's amazing." It was a fortunate turn of events for me, although I didn't know it at the time. I left the Plymouth Theater at about 11.30 and went to my, went to my flat. I, I got home and flipped on the television and there was this guy limping forward to, and he said, and now the Royal Shakespeare Company production of Chekhov's Three Sisters. And the credits start to roll and it's all the same actors that I had just spent eight huh. and a half hours with at Nicholas Nickleby. When that was over at three in the morning, um, it was an hour per sister, actually. It was three hours. and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then he limps forward, he says, and now the Royal Shakespeare Company production of Shakespeare's Macbeth. And it's uh, Ian, Rich uh, Ian McKellen and Judy Dench, and all the same actors I had just watched in The Three Sisters and in Nicholas Nickleby. I was now entirely obsessed, especially one particular person uh, who I noticed talking down in the front uh, where the premium seats now are. And then the play started, and it turned out to be the guy who was playing Nicholas Nickleby. And he was in the Chekhov, and he was in the Shakespeare that I saw that night on the television. So as dawn came up over the East River, I grabbed a yellow legal pad and wrote a letter to this particular actor. I never, of course, heard from the actor, a gentleman named Roger Rees. Uh, we're sitting there waiting for this Cats thing to start, and there's down there, down the front, there's the hated Trevor Nunn. And walking down the aisle suddenly comes Roger Rees. And I said, Hal, do you know who that is? And Hal said, oh yeah, that's Roger Rees. You know, last year when, he, uh, when Nicholas Nickleby was here, he taught me at, at Columbia. He taught my class at Columbia. I know him really well. I said, you know him? <laughs> and he said, yeah. I said, well, when this Cats thing is over, <laughs> I want you to introduce me to him if he's still here. Uh, and so when the Cats thing was over, Hal Luftig, bless his heart, introduced me to this guy, Roger Rees. So I had a couple of really good questions and I was able to ask a couple of really good questions to an actor, which meant that for an hour I got answers, you know? <laughs> and um, 30 years later, we, uh, we uh, still aren't sick of each other. Uh, I was in London at Roger's house painting the front room and there was a big filing cabinet. And as I was putting a drawer back in, I noticed there was a little file that said Rick's Correspondence. And, um, and here was a file with everything over, the, over five years. And he said, oh, I'll show you. So he came in and I said, you, oh, you saved all, all my, of course, I saved all of his correspondence, but I never believed anybody would save mine. And he said, oh, here, you might be interested and he, uh, in this. And he went to the very front of the file and he took out a piece of yellow legal paper. And he said, yeah, you know, that night at the Winter Garden when you were thinking, oh my God, this is the guy I've turned my apartment into a shrine to, I was thinking, oh my God, this is that guy who wrote me that incredible letter a year ago. And he had saved. And um, so it seems like it was a meant to be thing. <laughs>
It's two long swooping ones and then eight short little bursts. And very, very, very distinctive. Very, very specific. Very, very distinctive.